I started guitar and I graduated, but no, no one ever asked me for my <laughs> diploma, you know? Yeah. It's, like, it's not like someone's gonna ask if I go on stage, can I see your diploma? <laughs> on <whatever."> stage? <laughs> like, you drive me crazy. Yeah, it's huge, right? It's good. Yeah. Is that Britney Spears? No, wait. I'm so <laughs> excited. I'm in too deep. Oh, somebody. Hit me, baby, wanna hit. This guy, Duskus, from, from the UK, he was putting out amazing stuff and had no platform to do it on. So we started Bitbird and we posted on Bitbird and I would repost it on San Holo. I'm gonna be like one of those snobbish kids that like hates the term, <laughs> mm -hmm. hates the genre they, they're, they're put in. But there's definitely politics involved and the music industry is actually not about music. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm getting really bitter. I, that's like <laughs> something I it. do that. <laughs> I shouldn't, but like love has many forms and I think love is something different to everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's important that you're honest with yourself in finding out what love means to you. Well, maybe because I'm traveling so much and, and I'm never yeah. together with someone, with the one you love, that's changed me into thinking, you know, what is, what is love? Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk and I'm here with Sun Hollow. Hey, what's up? Yeah, this is actually a super requested interview, so this is awesome. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> so you were born in Netherlands, right? Yeah, have you ever been? Yeah, when I was super young with my parents. <laughs> Where yeah. in Netherlands? I grew up in a, in a place called Zoetermeer. It's like the, the, the most not cool place in Holland. Oh. It's like, it officially, it officially has the ugliest bridge in Holland. <laughs> It's called the Nelson Mandela Bridge. Yeah. And if he would see that bridge, he would, he would, die again. I guess. Like it's, it's it's terrible. I'll I'll, I'll send you a picture of the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll put it here for you guys to see. <laughs> but but I do love that city so much because it's so, it's so typically Dutch and so, not cool. That yeah. That's a beauty in it. That's, a, it's like a complete opposite world of LA. Oh my God. Were yeah. your parents born there as well? Um. I was born there. Yeah. Um, my dad was born somewhere else, I think. I'm not sure actually where my, where my parents were born. They were born in Holland, but I don't know the city. Yeah. Which I should know, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> and early on, your mo you were like super into like studying already, right? Studying? Uh, like uh, homework and stuff. Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> oh, it's probably interviews you read. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that's why I started playing guitar when I was uh, like 13 years old. Why are you so obsessed with homework? <laughs> yeah, I was just, I really wanted to do well. And I had no hobbies or no, no fun. So my mom said, son, go, go, so, go do something you love. And so I started playing guitar and like everything changed. Yeah. From that, from that moment. Do you remember early on like which subjects you really liked that you were obsessed with? I liked the subjects that I was good in, like languages and stuff. Oh. Like uh, English. For oh, example. that's cool. Yeah. Did your parents push you academically? No, not at all. I was just like, I, I don't know. You just, just had like that drive in I you. I was the stressful kid that just wanted to do well. And if I didn't, like, if, if I would get homework, I would be like, okay, I want to do this right now so I can chill out. Oh, you wow. Know? It's, it's terrible. And I'm still a little bit like that. It's like, I want to finish this song because otherwise I'm not going to be able to sleep well. Or like, yeah. You know? But I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm trying to be more in the moment and not think too much about the future. Yeah. Is stuff. it kind of academic in Netherlands? Like people really focus and try really hard in school? I don't know, I think it's the same. Yeah, same. I think it's the same here. I, and there's kids that don't give a fuck and there's kids that do really give a fuck. But both, both of them work, you know? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, my tour manager, Thor, he didn't. He didn't give a fuck about school, but he still graduated and he's still like doing cool stuff. So it's yeah. like, it doesn't really matter. No one's, no one's gonna look at my grades now. You know, no one's gonna be looking. I started guitar and I graduated, but no, no one ever asked me for my <laughs> diploma. You know. Yeah. It's, like, it's not like someone's gonna ask if I go on stage. Can I see your diploma? <laughs> on stage. You like hand in yeah. the certificate. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It's it's really about what you what you do with your life and. Yeah. These days with YouTube and like Google and internet and you, know, you can learn so much without going to school yeah um, so i don't know if it's if it's really mm -hmm. necessary still i think it's more for social things school right yeah oh it's such a deep conversation about <laughs> school and <laughs> what careers are your parents in um my dad is in construction my mom is in uh uh like an administrative 
administrative stuff for companies. Yeah. Where yeah. do you think you got a creative side then from? Did you have uh, other relatives who were like musicians? No, I was like kind of the first one who found it to pick up an instrument and then my brother started dr brother started drumming. We found out he's a really good drummer. Like, yeah. Yeah. Do something with your drumming, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Go play in a big band. And, yeah, that's my advice to him. Uh -huh. um, do you remember the first CD you bought? CD? Yeah. Yeah, it was a... Uh, do you know that's the Britney Spears song? Uh, <laughs> Like, you drive me crazy. Yeah, it's huge, right? It's yeah. Is that Britney Spears? No, wait. I'm so <laughs> excited. I'm in too deep. Oh, somebody. <laughs> hit me, baby, wanna hit me. Oh. What song is that again? Hit me, baby, one more time. Yeah. Britney I think Spears. So. Yeah. 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 So that was your first CD about was Britney Spears? <laughs> the first single, like, when I was a really young, like, I think six or seven or something. Um, but then when I really started getting into rock music, my first album I bought was uh, Limb Biscuit, uh, Hot Dog, uh, the ch Chocolate Starfish and Hot Dog Flavored Water. Because, you know, I was just like a kid and yeah. I loved the amount of times Fred Durst said fuck in his songs. So. <laughs> and I still really like them. They're yeah. awesome. What kind of music were your parents playing in the house? Oh, my dad used to play Rattle Chili Peppers all the time in the car. Oh. And that became one of my favorite bands. Yeah. And do you know Chili Peppers a little bit? Yeah, they're big. Well, I yeah. don't really listen what kind, to them. What kind of music do you listen to? Um, I started off really listening to like, uh, like Flume. Oh, really? So that's that's your start. That, that's your. Yeah, Cyril Han, all the YouTube. How old are you? Twenty three. Twenty three. Majestic Casual. That was a big part. That's that's probably yeah. Okay. Because it was cool. just for the internet. Because in Hong Kong, we don't have any of these people. So I found everything from yeah. YouTube. I I feel like. Even though we have a small age difference, mm -hmm. only three years, it really like the year you were born in really decides, or like, I don't know how to, how to word that properly in yeah. English, but like it really has an effect on the kind of music you listen to. Yeah. Because I grew up age in the- Age and location. Did you ever play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2? No. Yeah, that, I mean, that was like huge. That, that, that game yeah. was so big and the soundtrack- Not popular in Hong Kong, yeah. <laughs> not, not popular? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> what about the soundtrack? The sound, the, the soundtrack of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, like it's the entire track list of that game is amazing. It's got like yeah, Race it Against now. the Machine. It's got all kinds of punk bands. It's just, it's everyone played that game from my age. Like some, and everyone started skateboarding and everyone started listening to those bands. And I think it kind of gradually, yeah, that's like, like you should. I think there's a huge. The games we played, the, the TV shows we watched when we were young have a huge impact on the music we listen to. Yeah. yeah. And when you were younger, you were in like six to eight bands or something, right? Like indie bands. Yeah, I was, I was in bands yeah, and they all broke up at some point. Can you describe the kind of music it was? Yeah, it was just like indie music, uh, kind of weird music. There's, I, I, my previous project before San Holo was Kasi Lo-Fi. It's C-A- S I L O F I, Casi yeah. Lofi. And I'm, that was kind of my first experience with recording music. Like if you if you go check out that project you'll you'll see my entire learning process of oh, wow. to record music and I made these little cool videos on YouTube. They have like two thousand two thousand plays, so yeah. go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> was the band scene popular in the Netherlands or why did you even want to join a band compared to being like a solo artist? Because, you know, the Chili Peppers and stuff, mm. and the bands I grew up listening to. And there's nothing more beautiful than playing music with four or five or six people and like being in the same vibe and feeding off of each other's energy. Yeah. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing like it. And you notice it when, you, when I talk to DJs or producers that have never done that before, you notice mm -hmm. that, that they... And you also notice the ones that did actually play in a band. It's like a different kind of way of music. Um, yeah, it's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. But the ones that, I, that I've played in bands before, it's, it's easier to talk about music and the way things flow and things mm -hmm. like grooves and, and beats and yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. But there's no right or wrong. I mm -hmm. know people that have never played in bands and never touched an instrument and are amazing producers. Mm -hmm. so what are your parents' personalities like? Um, I think my, per my personality might be my mom's, like kind of stressed, uh, very. <laughs> wow. My, I, I think my mom's very sweet, so 
I hope I'm sweet as well. <laughs> but um, stressed, um, but still loving. Uh, my dad is, you know, also loving, but different. Just more of a dad, you know, mm -hmm. like more distant. I think I think that's a that's a relationship a lots of kids have with their parents. Like your dad is kind of the dad, more distant, but mm -hmm. cool. But yeah. <laughs> and your mom is the the person you go to whenever you feel bad or or when your girl broke up with you or mm -hmm. whatever. You yeah. Know? Have they always been supportive of music from the onset? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah they were like, I was like, mom, I want to do music. She was like. Yeah, go go for it. Wow. And my teachers at school were like, "Oh, there's not money in music, and you gotta you gotta have a backup yeah. plan." I never had a backup plan, and it worked yeah. out. So you never considered like studying music. I'm oh, sorry, studying English because <laughs> you're good at English and languages. I never considered studying English. No. Yeah. I was I w I knew it was gonna be something in music. After you finished high school, you went to Rotterdam Conservatory, right? Yeah, you did your homework. <laughs> You've been reading about me. <laughs> and why do you decide to study guitar there? Because um, I wanted to do something that would enable me to play music all day mm -hmm. as an official study. You know what yeah. I mean? Basically what I did for four years. Whoa, oh, this is going to get run over. <laughs> get, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> be a good interview oh my if God. that would have happened. Clickbait! I could have made that clickbait, guys. <laughs> Basically, the Rotterdam Conserv Conservatory, or I just call it music, yeah. music, enabled me to play music for four years and graduate and get a diploma. But, you know, it was all about making music, playing in bands, learning music the theory, um, having vocal lessons and piano lessons and guitar lessons and even drum lessons. And, and the, the, the one thing I learned on that school is what I didn't want to do, mm. you know? So I saw everyone going their own way. Some people would start playing in bands or just being a session musician for other people, you know, get mm -hmm. paid f per show. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do, I want to make something. I wanted to make something for myself and start my own thing. Yeah. yeah. How do you decide on studying guitar though? I mean, you could have studied like other types of production or? Well, I, I started guitar because I, I fell in love with the guitar at an early age. Like mm -hmm. watching Jimi Hendrix or John Frusciante from the Chili Peppers, I was like, wow, this is, it's still the coolest instrument there is. The guitar, yeah. come on, you cannot deny it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's just the truth. Yeah. Um, and at the, at the last couple of years of my study, I snuck into the production classes. Oh. Like secretly. I didn't pay for it extra, but I just snuck in. Yeah. And, you know, wrote down everything. And I realized that you know, I could probably find more information on YouTube and stuff. So I, so I graduated, started, started Googling and never going out, never going on holiday with friends, just producing music. Yeah. And I had a side job as a guitar teacher. Oh, okay. That I did three days a week for seven years. Damn. And I would finish it and then go back home and produce all night. And at some point yeah. I released this remix and then it kind of blew up and uh, what, now I'm here. Yeah, who were you teaching? Like was it students or? No, like kids and, and literally kids from five to guys from 55 years mm -hmm. old, you know? And some were really cool and yeah. some were terrible. <laughs> because you're always have, gonna have kids that have to play guitar from their parents, yeah. you know? Because they're like, you go do an instrument, honey. And then you're there with a little kid for five years old <laughs> with, they with these hands that can't even touch it. <laughs> and then you're trying to play something. It's like... Anyway, it was fun times yeah. though. Fun times. Were you living with your parents back then? Or yeah. did you already find I, your... I lived with my parents till I was about 22 years old. Yeah. yeah. And then I moved out in the same city. And I still live there now, but I'm never home. What's up, guys? <laughs> I feel like my, my jacket really fits the trees. Oh yeah, actually. Yeah. It's like the same same color as... Do you ever get cramps in your arm? No, I'm buff now. Oh shit. <laughs> you want me to hold it? No! Okay, cool. This is my workout. <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you have people around you who were doing like music production that you thought you could make it? Like anyone you looked up to during that time? There was not really a scene where I'm from. Yeah. The scene in Holland was the big room scene, you know, like mm -hmm. Martin Garrix. Uh, uh, back back when he made like really big uh, 
uh, EDM yeah. big room tracks. So there was not really like a melodic bass music scene at all. So I, I was listening. It's all SoundCloud, you know, SoundCloud. Yeah. Guys like Point Point, you know Point Point? Yeah. Like these guys meant a lot to me. Uh, also, in terms of putting out stuff, like they released my first track on their compilation two years ago, which was called Hiding. The compilation was called Filet Mignon. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, it's been like an ongoing journey. Yeah. And early on, you started putting out stuff through Bandcamp first, right? Like the pay to, pay to download. <laughs> yeah. Bandcamp days. It's still a thing, right? Bandcamp still exists. I think so. More indie stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was it still also under San Holo, or did you have a different name? No, that, that, that's the Cassie Lo fi oh, project I told you about. Yeah. 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 Go so check it out. It's still, so it's still out there. You can download it for free. <laughs> it's so not even on Spotify. <laughs> So San Holo was never on Bandcam, it went straight to SoundCloud. San Holo went straight to SoundCloud. Yeah. No, it's not true. I used to have like stuff on like early on. I never wanted people to hear the early San Holo stuff because it was so weird. Mm -hmm. So I deleted that off internet. Like some people know about it, but it was really not good yet. Yeah. Uh, but San Holo, yeah, started as a joke. Mm -hmm. I was making beats with friends. Like hip hop beats, and they were rapping on it. And then one of them was like, you know, Sonder. Sonder van Dyke, which is my name. Mm -hmm. It's not a cool artist name, dude. You need some cooler. And then someone said, and yeah, my brother, my bro Damien, uh, Damien, if you're watching Damien, thank you. <laughs> Damien said, yeah, son, holo, ha ha ha. And then we all laughed, and then we're like, okay. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, I like it. Yeah. What year was this? It was four years ago, like five years, four years ago. Yeah. yeah. Damn. What year are we in now? 2017. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then I uploaded the Miss Jackson remix. Uh, and then the, the, the next episode remix. And I got like a thousand plays on SoundCloud. I was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, it, and then it was a million and then it was 10 mm -hmm. million. Why do you think early on to remix those classics? Because no one really did a cool remix of it yet like they were all like kind of housey kind of bad house remixes of them and I, and I thought I could do a really cool new sounding remix of it and no one wanted to remix it because it's kind of classics they're like classics and yeah that's why I called the project don't don't touch the classics because no one really because I was like I'm gonna remix that song and they were like oh that's a classic I don't know if you should yeah Oh, I did. Did um, blogs already start picking it up? I think Hype Machine <laughs> was really early with picking up the, the, the Dr. Dre remix, which is why it blew up. Uh, did you like send your stuff out there oh, initially? No, or I had no idea. It? Oh, the, you just put up stuff and they randomly found you. I think back then, I, I released those remixes and they were getting hype. And back then that was still possible, but now because of the SoundCloud, it's so saturated. Mm -hmm. like, Every 16-year-old makes music now, you know. <laughs> they yeah. used to ask. They used to ask their parents for a guitar, but now they ask for Ableton and a, and a laptop. You know, yeah. it's, it's really true. And and um, so you, so these kids need new ways of getting their music out there. Yeah. How did you meet the Monster Cut people initially? Um, Monster Cat. Well, around that time when I put, when I put out this remix, I started working with my manager, Booty. Yeah. And he he was close with Monster Cat at some point. He worked there for a little bit, and then he he sent them my music, and they really liked it. And, yeah. Uh, and I did two EPs with them. They were great people. Mm -hmm. Did you start like ghost producing from other people at the beginning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many years ago was that? Around six, six years ago. Oh, so before you even started? No, no, right before San Jose oh. started. I think five, six years ago. Yeah. I, I did some remixes and I was like, wow, these remixes are getting good plays. Why don't I just do something for myself? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the ghost producing was a weird world. It's, it's, it's very... I remember the first remix I put out as a, for someone else. I thought it would be a collaboration, but it mm. wasn't. Like, my name wasn't on there and it was like, oh. Yeah, actually about that, since you didn't really have people around you who are musicians, 
you were able to figure stuff out like pretty pretty quickly, right? I, I had some some good people helping me out with contracts though, like some people I played in bands with. Uh, but but yeah, I was kind of learning from trial and error, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then how long has <laughs> Bitbird been around now? Bitbird. Oh yeah, Bitbird was also like I started that with, when I started San Holo because I wanted to have this own platform. Because like I said, there was not really a, a melodic bass music scene in terms of trap and like they call it future bass now yeah which i don't think is a good title anymore but um there was nothing like that in terms of a label so i was like let's start a label and then me and my homie thor did uh who did all the who does all the artwork yeah. for me you actually met him a long time ago right when you were like 14 and we were bands. playing in high school bands. Yeah. yeah i met him a long time ago we were like like childhood friends, I could say. Yeah. Yeah. How did Best friends. Yeah. Definitely. How did you even know like how to start like a record label? I didn't know. It was just like a SoundCloud platform at first. Yeah. Where we supported friends. Like yeah. this guy Duskus from, from the UK. He was putting out amazing stuff and had no platform to do it on. So we started Bitbird and we po posted on Bitbird. I would repost it on San Holo yeah. and on some other pages and then we kind of started getting a name, like putting their names out and... Yeah. Yeah. Did he come up with a name or did you come up with a... No, Bitbird is my, was originally also a side project of mine, mm. of like, like a producer project. Yeah. And I decided to turn it into a label. And then my friend Thor did the logo. And then along the, along the way, we found out that we should distribute stuff to Spotify and all that stuff. And now we have an entire team working for us. Yeah. Which is great. What is it like to see it like grow like that? It's kind of surreal, yeah. but also because you're working on it all the time, it's kind of a natural thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's, if I would s snap back one year and then snap forward one year, it would be like a wow, overwhelming, but you're working on it every day. So it, so it rises every day. Yeah. <laughs> it grows every day. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, it's yeah. like when you lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> Every day you lose a little bit of weight, and at some point you realize, oh, I. And they give I you the got, before and after yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> before, before and after. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Same for some people. I love Hello. that. <laughs> yeah. It's not like suddenly, like, oh, wow, we're big now. It's like you work, it's a long journey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna cough for a second, okay? Okay. <coughs> I've been having this cough for like a week. Oh, wow. It's this cough that. It doesn't warn you before, it just like starts right away. Like, oh, like more like dry, like... Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Maybe it's the air in Yeah. America. And how do you like focus your time between like being touring and Bitbird? Oh, it's not easy. It's uh, it's all kind of this, for me it's all the same thing. I, I tour, I meet people, I listen to their music, and we're like, want to work together on the label, and it's like a... I don't really see it as San Holo, Bitbird, personal time, it's all one thing. It, it's hard to manage the, the time, but I have to make time to listen to demos and I have to make time to um, work on Bitbird. Yeah. I don't know, it's not a really good answer because I don't really know how to word it well. Because mm -hmm. I'm from Holland and you're from... <laughs> oh, you, oh, your God. English is really good. <laughs> I sometimes struggle with finding the right words. Yeah, I'm the same. But I think the answer to that question should be... It's really hard to manage the time. Yeah. But for some reason, I'm managing it. <laughs> yeah. And you've only been home for like 10 days or something over the past <coughs> few years, right? You're like barely home. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not home a lot, which is, which is sad sometimes because at some point there's this distance between the people at home, like your friends, your family, girlfriends, girlfriend. Yeah, I was going to say that's a plural. <laughs> yeah, I meant to say girlfriend. <laughs> Does she live there now or fuck? Uh, it's a it's very complicated. <laughs> it's like very complicated. Yeah. Like, all those things, you know, it's it's uh because you're traveling all the time, it's so hard for them to relate to you, mm. but also so hard for me to relate to them. Yeah. My mom just called me right before the interview if she could get if her friend could get discount on a Bitbird shirt. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> okay, mom, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll just, <laughs> the discount. yeah, so, you know, it's, 
it's it's a, it's a weird life, but it's very inspiring, and I wouldn't want to miss yeah. it for sure. Would you say year by year you're adapting to it, or is it still kind of foreign to you and difficult for oh. you? I'm, I'm adapting to it for sure, mm -hmm. but people around me, especially people that are close, it's hard. It's hard for them. See, that's cough again. It's hard for them to adapt to it. Uh, because I used to be this kid who was at home all the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't even go out or like, I was home all the, all the time. Yeah. I used to go to work, which was five minutes away from me, then go back home. And uh, I used to be scared of planes. So this is like a complete wow. 180 for yeah. me. But it's cool, like I wouldn't want to miss it. I, it's inspiring and it's life and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Yeah. Looking back, what would you say were the key moments that got, to, got you where you are now? Started picking up a guitar. Mm -hmm. Started listening to hip hop music and producing beats, putting out some remixes, putting out original music. You know, finding your own sound, my yeah. own sound, <coughs> touring my ass off, and um, I mean the song from from the last couple of years. The song Light did a lot for me that, that I released. Mm -hmm. That was a big song for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people are still singing to it right now. Like, I, I've actually had a couple of times, which is like so surreal to, to walk in LA and hear that song coming out of a car. Oh. It's crazy. Um, but, but those moments were like really important. I think it's. That looks like a scary dog. <laughs> but. <laughs> but most scary dogs are really nice dogs, by the way. Um, like I said, it's yeah. it's really about working a lot, mm -hmm. like <laughs> locking yourself up in your room and driving yourself crazy because you can't get the mix right. Or yeah, it's How like you have to be obsessed with with what you're doing. I think mm -hmm. almost being autistic, and like an always like artistic, autistic. It doesn't. It's like a small difference. Mm -hmm. How would you say your music has changed from the early songs that you made? Mm. Oh, so much. So much. But we'll go back there one day. What's up, man? Oh, yeah. Film it, film it, film it. <laughs> oh people I love about LA. <laughs> Randomly, people playing music on the street. <laughs> locked out of his girlfriend's house. <laughs> what? He's locked out of his girlfriend's oh, house, so he's just playing guitar outside. <laughs> music industry is a weird thing, and um, I think artists always start off the most pure form they are, like the most where they are in the moment, without thinking about pleasing the radio or without pleasing any other people that need to love your music in order to get somewhere. Mm. Um, but definitely, I've, I've, I've done songs that were based off also on that idea of like... Light was a song, good example. I did want to make something that was, you know, had some parts of my own sound combined with a poppy vocal that my mom could love as well, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an ongoing process yeah. where I, it does really reflect where I, where I am in life. Yeah. You know how like Chain Smokers was more like SoundCloud. Do you have the pressure to be more into like pop music and like uh, working with more singers, trying to get on the radio, yeah, that well, sort of thing? Well, that's how the music industry works. Yeah. My old stuff is never going to be played on the radio, mm -hmm. and 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 that's a that's a decision you got to make for yourself. Do I do I want that? Do I want to do I want people in their cars to he hear my song on the radio, mm -hmm. or do I want to like make music for that niche of people and play in like a smaller venues and I think there's a part of me that loves both um, I love the small small places and like the really niche beats kind of scene but I also really love pop music so I, I'm just gonna do it both yeah yeah there's no there's no right or wrong like I said there's no right or wrong mm -hmm. but the industry is definitely pigeonholing yeah the, 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 it's undeniable. I can be yeah. like, I can be one of the people saying, oh, you can do whatever you want, just follow your heart. And But there's definitely politics involved and the music industry is actually not about music. 
Mm. I'm sorry, I'm getting really bitter. I, that's like <laughs> something I do it. that I shouldn't. But like, the people that are, people are gonna hate me for saying this, but people that say that the music industry is all about music are full of shit. Mm -hmm. It's just not true. It's about having good friends and getting the likes of the people and the Spotify gatekeepers and the. Mm -hmm. it's, it's oh I shouldn't talk about it it's, it's like really I don't want to because I hate it and I love it mm -hmm. I love I love it and I hate yeah. it yeah like I said there's like there's no right or wrong mm -hmm. it's, it's just the way it is yeah how do you think you've grown as a person since when you started <laughs> I, I don't even know I've changed I've changed so much I, I change every tour really when, when I started this tour I was thinking differently about stuff yeah like what what type of thinking has changed it's um you just meet so many different people and different cultures like i was in asia for a month and i realized people in china are listening to my music and i never knew that mm -hmm. like we, and i didn't know it because there is no facebook there no twitter yeah, no instagram Weibo, wechat yeah there's wechat and stuff which is the, an entire new universe yeah and i, I had no idea um uh, so it's stuff like that and things about love and about you know what love really is yeah what is love to you <laughs> love has many forms and i think love is something different to everyone mm -hmm. and and i think it's important that you're honest with yourself in finding out what love means to you and what being in love means to you and if that's really even a thing mm -hmm. or or if it's all just Hollywood or California or like <laughs> Californication um, I mean yeah love is a there's no fixed definition of love yeah and I think that's the problem that people think there is one but there's not mm -hmm. love is whatever you feel like it is what do you think love is <laughs> no. I'm on the we're gonna do this you're gonna put this in the interview what do you think love is? Like I think love is meeting someone that you feel like completely comfortable with mm -hmm. and that like you're just on the same page and like Yeah. I'm trying to think. But have you ever been in a relationship like for a yeah. long while? No. For how long? <laughs> for three years or so. Okay. Yeah. It's not getting old? No. That's awesome. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. Well maybe because I'm traveling so much and, and I'm never yeah together with someone with the one you love that's changed me into thinking you know what is what is love because it's it's really hard when you're not together you know mm -hmm. yeah um it's uh, it's too personal to talk about to yeah. you guys it's really it goes really deep mm -hmm. um, but that's one way of looking at love yeah i have a total different view on love completely different really view on love. yeah i mean that's one thing yeah but um yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's the only person in your life that you could have that with? Pretty much. I just feel like I'm so like set in the way I am and to f like feel like I I'm on the same page with someone, it's so rare. Like if I wasn't with him, I don't even know. I'd probably just <laughs> be alone or something. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You just wouldn't. <laughs> there are how many people are there in this world? <laughs> Do you think that guy's the only guy that uh, I mean <laughs> in your life that guy would be the only one to really get you it's not it's just not true yeah it's oh I, I know <laughs> I, I don't want to sound bitter it's beautiful um, it's just you know yeah I know it's it's uh, <laughs> I can't talk about it anymore it's, it's, oh, it's, really it's love is beautiful but also terrible mm hmm yeah Last question, just because <laughs> my yeah. memory. Yeah, um, sorry. Sorry for the weird <laughs> the <detail. love> talk. <laughs> I love that, though. <laughs> to be honest, I still haven't figured it out. What that is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's something that changes in, in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you want to be remembered for? Um, my views on love. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do I really want to be remembered? I hope, I hope that my songs... Do you know when you listen to a song and it brings mm -hmm. you back to a certain time in your life? 
That was actually when I was listening to um, I Miss You Again. Oh, really? Because that was, because when I interviewed you two years ago, that was the song that I kept playing. Oh, really? Yeah. And now even looking back, I was thinking about all my memories that I had yeah. with that song well, when I first listened to it. Then my work is complete, because that's, to me, that's one of the most beautiful things. Like listening to a song and taking you back to a specific moment in your life, you know, that you met a specific that girl or that you went on holiday with your family or that you went to a festival that you'll never forget, you know, or that you were heartbroken, you know, something in your life that meant a big deal to you that you relate to a song. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>